better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about Red Goblin, issue 6, 7, and 8. We're going to try to catch up on this. Because it's the holidays, you know, and we want to talk about family, uh, like Fast and the Furious franchise. But in this case, we're talking about the Spider-Man universe. And family in the Spider-Man universe means symbiotes and Osborns, apparently. Because we got a video game recently with Osborn symbiotes. And ever since the Red Goblin stuff originally with, you know, Norman Osborn as the Carnage Red Goblin creature. Now we have his grandson, Normie, who has the symbiote. But it's a different one. A sliver of Carnage that was cleansed by the Anti-Venom symbiote. And it is and freed from the hive and stuff like that and cured by venom. And it is called Rascal. And, uh, and it has bonded itself to Normie. And now he's getting into some misadventures while trying to go to school and have a normal life. And, uh, and be, you know, the grandson of, you know, Norman Osborn. It's, it's a lot this kid has to deal with. This kind of wraps up the Philip Urich story. And it kind of sets up, like, how this all is going to wrap up and end at some point then or not some point but it issues nine and ten so uh yeah and then also jan who comes back and does the art but then we also have another artist on here uh raphael and uh and chris and uh, raphael and chris come in and help out with issue seven and eight respectively so i have their names pop up on screen there's everyone's names who worked on this book as far as writers go uh, you know which is alex and the three artists that work on these issues and we're going to dive right in and I'm going to give out the digital code. So boom, right there, there's a digital code for issue seven. So if you're new here on the channel, whenever there's a digital code in these books, I try to give them out. And so the first person to put that code in, go to that website, put in that code and you'll get issue seven of Red Goblin. And you'll get to see a really cool battle between Red Goblin and our friend here, Crossbones. So uh, let's dive into this because there's a lot to unpack in these three episodes or issues. And we got to start with where the last one left off, which is, you know, Philip Urich, the Goblin King, is dying. We find out he's dying again because he's been resurrected by the Goblin Serum, but now he's dying from it again. It's like, oh man, they brought him back just to kind of kill him again. And that's really frustrating <laughs> as, a, as a Philip Urich fan. But they do have some cool stuff in this with the loners, and we'll get into that too. I'm not going to break down each issue individually. I'm going to kind of talk about all three of them as a whole and give some spoilers. So, you know, fair warning there because we want to dissect some of this book. But I do encourage you guys to go buy these yourself, whether you get them in single issue or trade paperback. I'm pretty sure at some point they'll put all 10 issues in one volume. But right now they're going to be split up over two volumes. And I would recommend you check them out if you're a, you know, Osborne family fan at all, or if you're just a fan of symbiotes, I think it's worth the price of admission on these books. Uh, these have been fun and I like the artwork. I wish Jan stayed on for the whole ride, but I think she's going off and did like Captain Marvel or some other books that she's uh, Jan's working on. So that's cool. Yeah, awesome artwork. You know, uh, so wherever you go, Jan, I'm going to follow at some point and, and check out your stuff because I'm in love with your artwork. Uh, but and Alex, too, I'm going to check out more of your writing. That's uh, for sure. So I want to get that positive out of the way because I know I like to get critical um, as a former writer and editor. Well, current writer still, but former comic book editor and stuff. These are just things that stand out to me when I'm reading books and stuff that I wish editors would notice. And maybe they did and they, they all talked it out and they decided to stick with what ended up in the books themselves. And that's fine, too. We all have different opinions and everything. I try to keep things pretty positive on here, but I do get critical. So you have the Goblin Nation, like they're still doing their thing. They're underground. Philip Uric is dying. And then Kandra is this person who's kind of taking over, like second in command to Phil. And she's starting to step up and uh, he makes her a Goblin Knight, gets her own Hobgoblin-esque costume. And then she takes a couple of you know, they're henchmen, uh, they're most devout ones, and they decide to go after the Red Goblin. Because remember in the earlier issues, Phil Urich found that little name tag that was from one of the school uniforms, and it was Anders, which is a kid that is friends with Normie, and it's obviously not Normie. So he ends up kidnapping the wrong kid. He sends Kandra to do it. They kidnap the kid. They try to hold him for ransom, and uh, it doesn't go so well <laughs> because the kid is not the Red Goblin, and it turns out he's also an orphan. So he is rich but he will inherit that money later in life. So there's no one to really pay the ransom for him. Um, he has an estate and everything like that, but it, the way the money's tied up, they can't just you know give money over. And what ends up happening is Crossbones gets dispatched by Phil Urich because we find out that he doesn't actually like Kandra and he knows that Kandra's trying to rise in the ranks and is you know getting a lot of respect of the other men and everything and everyone in their, you know, their followers. And it's becoming very much like a cult, the Goblin Nation, obviously. And Phil doesn't like this. And he's like, I think I'm going to find a way if I'll bond with the symbiote, it'll rejuvenate me. It'll help fix 
what's falling apart, which I'm like, how did the goblin serum bring him back and then him deteriorate? I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. They don't really go into that too much in the book. I mean, I think they kind of try to give an answer. It just didn't stick with me to the point where it made sense. So he's degenerating again, um, like almost like clones do, you know, but he's falling apart. You can see his bones and his teeth and stuff. And his new plan is like, okay, I just want the red goblin because I know it's a symbiote that's bonded to it. And maybe I can talk it into bonding with me and it'll keep me alive. So that's his new plan. So it's like, okay, that wasn't his original plan. When he came back from the dead, um, he wanted to juice up with all these goblin serums, but they didn't get enough goblin serum and he's unable to re fully rejuvenate. So now his plan B is getting the red goblin costume rascal. So they kidnap Anders, you know, Kandra runs to the school. I think they're at a Smithsonian, they're at a museum and uh, they kidnap Anders there. And Normie sees it and he's like, okay. And so does his little brother, Stanley. And Stanley gets pulled away by one of the teachers. So he's taken away safely. And Normie gets his suit, obviously rascal, and suits up and goes after Kandra. But Kandra slips away during this whole fiasco. And uh, the suit itself starts going a little crazy. It starts becoming a little bit more like Carnage again. Even though it was cleansed, it looks like it might need another cleansing. So it's starting to lose control and it's starting to tap in to some of Normie's darker thoughts, uh, which he does have because, you know, he's had a troubled life. He's seen his father die uh, twice, if you count the clone version as well. And he's going through a lot emotionally. He feels responsible for his younger, you know, half brother or stepbrother. And there's a lot going on there. And he's also wondering where his mom's been because obviously she is now, Liz Allen has become Misery, another symbiote character. So yeah, for this holiday season, we're going to be talking about a lot of Osborne symbiote people because we just talked about the game. Now we're going to talk about, you know, Normie here and then Liz in a future episode. But luckily not Norman. Norman is back to just being a goblin again. He's a gold goblin now. I think he's going to get his memories back and, and his evil back or whatever, his sins. And he'll become a green goblin again around issue 50, I'm sure. That's what they're building to. But for now, he's the gold goblin, and we will see him, but not till the final two issues of this book. So we'll talk about him in a future episode. Like I said, Normie is hunting down Kandra, looking for Anders, and Crossbones is dispatched by Phil Urich, who is like, all right, I'm going to double cross Kandra. She's down in the sewers, and I'm going to send Crossbones down to kill her. And he gets down there, and he's pretty effective. He takes out some of the other henchmen, and he does wound her, but she does get away with Anders, and Red Goblin shows up. And they battle crossbones, you know, together, Ras Rascal and Normie. But then so does Miles. And Miles makes an appearance in this and teams up with Red Goblin, even though he's starting to go a little mad. Um, you know, Miles is there to try to help him and coach him back to, you know, sanity, I guess. And together they take on crossbones and they pretty much beat the crap out of him. He uh, he is tough, though. He puts up a good fight for you crossbones fans out there. Like, uh, you know, I know a guy named Jack who's a big crossbones fan. And sometimes Crossbones gets a little punked sometimes, and I was afraid they were going to do that here, and they kind of do a little bit, but under the circumstances and seeing how unprepared he was for Miles to show up, it, he is a little bit over, in over his head. You know, he's got a Spider-Man and a, a Carnage, basically, that he's up against, and so he does lose the fight. And uh, But, Car you know, Kandra does get away with Anders and brings Anders back to Phil Urich, and he's like, oh my goodness, Kendra, you know, I'm so happy you're back, you know, and of course she sees right through it. She's like, look, I know you betrayed me. And he's like, okay, so what are you going to do? You're dying. I'm dying now. Like, what are we going to fight to the death? And, and uh, whoever, you know, wins is the leader of our goblin nation now. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm literally going to die. Like, you know, Crossbones got a good lick on me and I'm going to die. I'm bleeding out. And she said, but that's why I brought the kid here. Uh, because the kid has a way of being tracked now, uh, and he is here. I brought him here to you, so that way that red bastard will come in here and kill you for taking his friend. Because it turns out, you know, Anders is not the red goblin, obviously. She found out that he was an orphan and that there was no way they were going to get the ransom. And that this was all a setup by Phil to get back at Kandra and to get her killed in the line of duty. And so he can continue to lead without any interruptions. And it obviously all this went south and Kandra found out. So Anders does get rescued by the Red Goblin. And there is a big battle and Crossbones and Miles and, you know, everyone there, Phil Urich. And we get to see an actual end to Phil Urich. And it's it's heartbreaking for me because I really love Phil Urich. Um, and they even do a really cool moment where in issue seven, they open up Alex, you know, writing it, it goes back to the beginning uh, or not the super beginning, not all the way back to the Green Goblin uh, series from the 90s. But a little bit after that, there was a comic book called The Loners. And The Loners was Phil Urich kind of doing a little AA meeting group with a bunch of teenager superheroes like, you know, Ricochet from Slingers and, and uh, Night Thrasher and a couple other people. 
and they all kind of met in you know they were had this like focus group AA meeting in California, trying to talk about how they were former you know uh, superheroes and that they're giving that life up because they lost their amulet that gave him powers like dark hawk or they lost their costume like phil yurk his mask broke and that was a source of some you know some of his powers outside of the goblin formula that was in him and uh so everyone's talking about how they're not really they're trying not to be superheroes anymore basically and so there's a cool flashback to the loners and you get to see how the group actually disbanded because they didn't really go into that fully in the series like they kind of left it open to where they could do more loner stuff a little bit like one door kind of closes but another one stays open kind of thing but in this one they kind of go back and show the moment that phil uric kind of loses it and kind of becomes hypocritical and starts going down the path that we saw him in when he joined the cast of spider-man back when they did big time which is uh you know we didn't see philip uric for years and then he came back and became the new hobgoblin during the story of big time which i really loved uh so seeing him here get brought back from the dead and then slowly decay and then get killed in issue eight here was like a uh, bit kind of bitter for a uh, sweet for me, I guess, because it was cool to see him again, but it was really, it's a bummer to see him not last very long, uh, you know, this time around. Uh, but this is for sure. He's gone this time. I think, uh, you know, when you get your head eaten off by a carnage symbiote, I think you're pretty dead. Uh, even in comics, I think like that's a pretty good indicator that you're not coming back, but who knows? I mean, he's a goblin and a lot of goblins don't stay dead. So the book ends up where Anders goes back, you know, to where he goes to, like, you know, his estates or whatever. Um, he kind of knows Normie is the symbiote thing, but they kind of, you know, he decides to keep it a secret, doesn't tell anyone. Um, and then Normie, you know, gets to check in on his family, make sure Stanley's okay and his mom's okay, but she's about to take another business trip, which ties into her misery book. So we'll get into that. But let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you think this is a good series? Do you like issues six, seven, and eight? Or do you disagree with me? If you have criticism that I didn't mention, let me know down below. We'll keep talking down there. And if there's things you like that you want to praise this book for, please let it be known down in the comments. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.